Previously on Southern Bells Louisville. Put your hands together for the birthday girl. Hadley's birthday party turned from sweet to sour after Russ showed a little too much affection. I love you. I love you. For the other female guests. He's over here flirting with other people in front of me. I mean, you can't change a cheetah spot. So tonight, will the birthday girl's luck change? Hello. Or will she be in for another unpleasant surprise? Right. Shay and Jeff tangled over the lifestyle to which she has become accustomed. We aren't getting a nanny. I wouldn't rule it out because I'm not ruling it out. <laughs> tonight, it's time to seek professional help over issues that stand to threaten their future. You'll tell me things over and over and over again. Maybe I just didn't know if you heard me because nothing changed. Can they bridge their differences or will they be torn apart? I just feel like walking into here doesn't feel like home to me. After two failed marriages, Kelly finally found happiness with a long distance love. But her desire for a baby put her relationship at a crossroads. I wish I could just say right now that, you know, I'd have a baby with you, but I have one. That's when I have to make a decision on whether I'm going to be with you or not. Tonight, Jeff gives an ultimatum. I think it's time for you to make the move. <laughs> Just come to Chicago. And Kelly must make a tough choice. I feel so torn. Having to choose between Jeff or having a child of my own. After several promising dates and still no mate, Julie's heart felt the sting of rejection. Not tonight. I'm not sure I can make it. It doesn't feel good. I don't know if I want to do it again. Tonight, can Julie swallow her pride? You need to take some risks. Ask guys out. And kick herself into high yeah. gear. Ask a guy out on a date. I just hope I don't have to deck him first. Yeah. Emily's entertainment career in Vegas heated up while her love life got even hotter. It's just got this little swag that's different to him. You don't find it in Kentucky at all. Giving her parents plenty to worry about. I just think you're enamored by the glitz and glamour of Vegas. Tonight, after much soul searching about leaving Louisville for good, can Emily find a way... What's your biggest worry? I worry that you may do something stupid. ...to break the news to her fired up father. Maybe it's not such a good time to tell my dad that his little girl's moving to Las Vegas for good while he's got a gun in his hand. else always has an opinion about Russ and what I should do. You know, I've been dating Russ and we've been having a great time, but I still have reservations at my birthday party. I've got Russ confessing his love to me and then two seconds later he's over here flirting with all these other girls. All I keep thinking about is what Shay said. You know, you really, you can't change a leopard spots. I don't know if he could ever change. So how do you feel? I mean, I would have a really hard time trusting him. That's a fear for you that he would be unfaithful. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely valid. I mean, he's always surrounded by women, and, and you know, that's fine, but, you know, he's he is a flirt. You kind of always have the fear of, is he going to cheat on me? And if he does, the relationship would be severed. It would end. And then once that happens, once that betrayal has happened, then I lose my friend. I'm having serious trust issues with Russ, and I don't really know the right way to go around talking to him about it or addressing the issue. You're still rush into a decision. He'll make the right one. I hope so. You will. Coming from a divorced family and worried about her future with Jeff, Shay booked a premarital counseling session as a little insurance. I grew up with a lot of drama. I do not want what happened to my parents to happen to Jeff and I. Good to see you. Let's go right to work, okay? Other people we know in Louisville have either gone to marriage counseling or to their church, and it seems like it's really helped them out a lot. Shay, what are some of the things that just drive you nuts about Jeff? Sometimes we discuss this beard do, that's this thing that's happening. Sometimes it gets a little scruffy, and I feel like when he doesn't maintain it, that it's disrespectful. My beard is a major contention in our relationship. If I shave, I get a kiss. And if I don't, I'm out of luck. I have changed so much for you. Mm -hmm. This is like, like 20 notches down from what it was. 
And, and what are some of the things that drive you crazy about Chad? It's not nagging, but you'll tell me things over and over and over again every day. And after a point, I get to the point where I'm saying, well, I'm going to do it just to spite you. Maybe I just didn't know if you heard me because nothing changed, <laughs> which isn't good. Uh, money. Money is a killer in a lot of marriages. Would you, Shay, ask um, Jeff if he thinks you're a good money manager? <laughs> you think I'm a good money manager? No. <laughs> Honey. No. I'm worried about Shay's spending habits. Obviously, she's a spendaholic. I know that I'm good with money. I think we just spend on different things. I don't think that it's ever been like an issue. Most place settings, I would say, run roughly between three and five hundred dollars a place setting. My budgeting, at least the way I try to explain it to Jeffrey, is that if I buy the five or six hundred dollar pair of shoes, then I'm buying one pair of shoes. If I buy the less expensive pair, they might wear out, and I might end up buying five or six pairs. It's Shea budgeting. I'm saving money. Do we have different spending habits? Yes. <laughs> Conflict is inevitable. The only question is, how resilient can we be? After waiting for days for Jeff to return to Louisville, Kelly couldn't wait to pick him up from the airport. But she was a little nervous to tell him about her fertility news. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? Now that I know that I can biologically have a child, it's something we need to talk about. You know, it seemed like it would be so easy living in two different cities, but <laughs> Damn, that's like the ideal point, right? Yeah, I thought it was perfect. I don't know, but I think it's time for you to make make the move. <laughs> Leave Kentucky. You don't have to leave. You just come to Chicago. As you know, it just it creates a little anxiety for me because you know I have the business going on, which is going well. It's a lot, but it's good. You can run that from anywhere. You know, I went to the fertility doctor. Dun da da da. <laughs> Guess what? What? My eggs are good. You don't look like you're happy. Kelly. I have good eggs. Are you nuts? Wow, you know what? I really want a child. But you know my deal. Like, I really want, I want a baby, and I feel like that's something that's missing in my life. Makes me sad. <laughs> I just want a baby. Don't cry. No, oh, but I feel it's like, it's like, you know, it's like I either choose to be with you or I choose to have a child. And I understand. And you know what? Part of me would love to give you something that you want so badly. But the other side of me knows that it's not what I want. I love you. When I am rejected, whether that's professionally or in my dating life, I just feel like there's something wrong with me. I want to go bury my head in the sand. When I'm around my friends and they're talking about their boyfriends, their husbands, their new engagements, their kids, I feel jealousy. I feel envious of everything that everybody else was doing. I definitely, definitely want a family in my future, but I want the right guy just as much as I want a family. When am I going to find Mr. Right? I'm panicked at this point. I'm just, I'm just ready. I'm anxious. Oh, 
still conflicted over Russ's flirty behavior at her birthday party. Too fast, too fast, too fast. Hadley took refuge in the menial tasks of her job. The whole Russ thing is confusing, and I don't really know how I feel, but at least I've got a job to keep my mind off of it. It's okay, big fella. Even though my job is just full of no-brainer tasks and menial jobs, it's for a big player here in Louisville, and I know it could lead to a better position. Yeah, come on. I mean, I don't have a trust fund to support me, so a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. With Russ being Russ, it kind of bothers me. It's, it's kind of nice to have the job to kind of escape to. Escaping Russ was one thing, but Hadley's boss could always find her. Hello. And the news was anything but good. Right. I get a phone call from my boss, and the news wasn't good. So I called up my mom to tell her what happened. Mom? Yeah. So my boss just called me. Okay. And uh, she let me go. Are you there? How do you feel? Relieved and disappointed at the same time, if that's possible. I feel like everybody else is taking steps forward and in some cases leaps and I feel like I just took two steps back. Hopefully the things won't be rough on you and, and you, you can find something to do. Well, I hope so. Honestly, I think this is an opportunity. Mm hmm Just need to keep moving forward and you will do wonderful. Well, I hope so. All right. Thanks, Mom. Bye. I'm not sure what's up next, but all I know is I got to get a plan and... I gotta get it fast. Emily invited her high school friends out for a day in the sun to dish on her exciting job news. I decided to bring some of my girlfriends out to our family boat and I had some very big news to tell them about Vegas so I wanted to make sure we were relaxing and chilling in style. <laughs> Let's hear about your Vegas job. Okay, well, this is the job that I think I've been waiting for. Here, you know, it's great for raising a family in Louisville and whatnot, but like, really be able, being able to follow my dreams, there's just so many more opportunities out west. And do you ever feel like you're trying to chase something? I'm not chasing anything. I just want to experience life. You know, like in Kentucky, you're limited. I definitely don't understand the way that some people are perfectly happy with settling and living just a kind of a cookie cutter life. Louisville is just boring. Are you guys always going to stay here? My job right now is pretty content. Yeah, so pretty I'm, I'm content living here. If I have a good job, you, are you know. Content? Do you ever wonder, like, what if though? Like, am I settling? Am I settling for this job? They're well, and half like, the guys that are in Vegas scary. are there for vacation and then they leave and then they come. Yeah, and they but leave, there's a whole you know? city there that has to make that world go round. And there's a lot of young people there, a lot of motivated, young, successful people. You just have, like, see different types of people, different backgrounds, different experiences. You know, like, there's hot Asian guys in Vegas. I've never seen, like, one hot Asian guy here ever. Well, except her boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> My girlfriends will always live in Louisville, which is fine. I just hope the girls understand where I'm coming from when I say I don't feel like I belong here. So how do your parents feel about this move to Vegas? You're totally a daddy's girl, so it's kind of like, what are you going to do? I just say, you know, I'll cross that bridge when I come there. I'm really at this crossroads in my life and haven't told my parents yet. I really want to tell my dad that I am getting on that plane and saying goodbye for good. Continually striking out in the love department, Julie met up with an old friend who had just hit a home run. A good friend of mine, Dre, has just gotten engaged. So I asked Dre, you know, what is the secret? How do you reach that point when you just know that this is the one? I, I date here and there, but I just haven't really found someone that I can see myself spending the rest of my life with. So what you're saying is you're stagnant? Yeah, you could kind of put it that way, and I think that has to do with me, A, B, being in a place like Louisville that I love, but we know the dating pool 
the older you get, the dating pool becomes about this big. Exactly. It is old, so. You need to start getting out more and meeting other people. The other thing, too, you need to take some risks. Ask guys out. I know that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. Uh -oh. <laughs> Dre told me to open myself up and take risks and to approach the guy. There's nothing wrong with being the aggressor a little bit. Me ask? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I've uh, never done that. You know I don't. That's a sticky one for me, but that was his advice. Guys out there, they like to have that, that come on by the woman. I mean, they, they uh, found that very attractive, very sexy. Don't morning. be scared. Don't be scared. I don't <laughs> After hearing this advice from Dre, I decided I'm going to put this in motion and just kind of step outside of my box that I tend to stay in. You take some risk, you never know. Don't get anything in life once you ask for it. Don't get an apple until you reach up on the tree. <laughs> For the first time since her engagement party, Shay sat down with her dad for a little heart-to-heart. -heart. Were you nervous when you told me you were going to get married? Mm -hmm. I think Jeff's, um, an absolutely great son-in-law to be. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to tell him everything about you until you're officially married. <laughs> I remember one time when I said, you need to work in life. You know, you can carry out the garbage, you can wash the car, whatever you do, I will double your money and open up a checking account for you. <laughs> and one day, two years later, you presented me with $1,400 and change. Where did you ever get $1,400? And you said, but dad, every day you came home from work and you emptied your pockets, I just scooped the quarters up and tucked them to my bedroom. And now I'm ready to open up my checking account. <laughs> I was a little entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I take some of Jeff's quarters and put them in my checking account. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> my dad has been extremely generous to me my entire life, but I don't think I'm allowed to be a daddy's girl anymore. I think I'm getting cut off. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to figure something out. I say, God bless Jeff. <laughs> Recently laid off and eager to find a way to pay the bills, Hadley remembered how much she enjoyed campaigning for Katie King. Hey! How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, long time to see I've made arrangements to meet Katie King at her office in order to really commit myself to helping her campaign. Thanks for stopping by. Anytime. Katie's actually a great mentor for the mere fact that she talks to me as someone I can look up to and as a woman. Yeah, I know that you want to stop this whole like revolving door situation right. that's going on. Criminals that just keep coming in and then we keep letting them back out. Uh, you got the revolving door in public service. Okay. I'm gonna take yeah, notes. Take notes. That's cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right. Definitely take notes because I think sure. I've got a really good idea. Do you think you'd feel comfortable giving a speech for me? Oh. Okay, wait a minute. Katie King wants me to give a speech and this is my first assignment. I mean, this is crazy. Right. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just gonna look at you and act like I'm okay. doing it. Okay, okay. Right. So intro bio and then points. Yeah. Yeah, this should be really easy. If I don't hit all the points and don't sell Katie, then, you know, I might turn people to vote for her opponent. Well, I'll go home and practice in the mirror and, you know, the more you do it, the more, right. the easier it gets. It feels great having a larger purpose, you know, one of importance. Bye. Yeah, bye, thanks. I've never really made a stance on anything and, you know, I feel like I'm really ready to take the bull by the horns and just get in there and really campaign for Katie. Coming up, Kelly can't convince Jeff to start a family with her. If the choice is that you need to have a child, I just might not be the guy. Still considering Jeff's proposition to move to Chicago, Kelly picked an intimate moment to bring up the baby conversation again. Don't you think we'd be really good parents? Of course we'd be good parents, but I'm already a parent. Oh, but that means you should want to do it again. That's not what it means. You know, I'd never want to hold you back from doing something that you want and need to do. But <laughs> I feel the butt coming. If the choice is that you need to have a child, I just might not be the guy. 
I don't understand why it's not in your heart to do it with me. I think, you know, it's, it's not <clears throat> in my heart. I just look at the realities of the situation. I think we are incredible together, but, you know, that's, that's a big thing. I just feel like it's never, like, all the stars are never aligned. That's life. I feel torn. I love Jeff, but I do want a child. Emily needed to get back to her roots to do some soul searching. So she sought out a spiritual sanctuary. I would love to have my dad's blessing, but deep down, I'm terrified with how my dad is going to react with what I have to tell him. Vegas? Why does it have to be Vegas? You're a father's nightmare. My dad's hard on me because he wants the best for me and he loves me. And the last place he wants his little girl to go would be Sin City. I've got this huge opportunity in front of me in Las Vegas. I just hope my dad really understands this isn't a decision that I made overnight. And no matter where I go, if I'm near or far, I will always have my family in my heart. Figuring she had nothing to lose, Hadley decided to take a shot at giving a campaign speech for Katie King. Hey guys, can I have your attention for just a second? Sorry to interrupt your lunch. So I've been going around spreading the word about Katie King, and I mean, I really hope I do her proud. How you guys doing? How's lunch? Sorry. Um, I'm just here campaigning for Katie King. My name's Hadley Hart. I'm sweating, and I clearly didn't apply enough deodorant, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> So I'm sure you guys have seen the Katie King signs all around town. Um, she was born and raised right here. Um, she would make a great... I'm stiff, I'm sweating, I'm nervous. I've got all these eyes looking at me. I mean, I'm just a big hot mess. Um, she is... Um, sorry. She really wants to bring respect back into the courthouse. So just remember to vote for district court judge. Um, vote for Katie King, sorry, on November 4th. They're eating and they're chatting, and they didn't really look too happy that I was, like, yelling at them. It could have gone better. Could have got a lot better. Coming up, Shay and Jeff can't compromise on a place to call home. I've actually pulled a list of brand-new condos. I don't want to be in a condo. With wedding plans rolling along, Shay and Jeff needed to figure out where they're going to call home. I've actually pulled a list of condos. And for Shay, that meant a condo with all the amenities and none of the work. I thought we were going to look at houses. I meant like a home. I didn't mean like a house. I meant a home. That doesn't feel like home to me, going up an elevator or whatever. We're young, but we're grown-ups. We have an opportunity to get a place that feels like a home to me. I feel like condos are kind of apartment -y, and I feel like I've been in an apartment for the past 10 years of my life, and I'm ready to move on. I wanted to look at condos because I think that they just make sense, given that we're not going to have kids for several years, and it's just going to be an easy and fun lifestyle to have. I thought, you know, us both growing up in good homes and being in the suburbs and everything, I would have thought that's what direction we were going. I know, but I've grown up in the, the beautiful, nice homes, and I feel like it's a lot of responsibility, and I don't know that I'm up for it right now. I really want Jeff to know that this is about us and how we're going to live our lives. There's amenities in the condos, typically. There's exercise rooms and pools, and it's very low maintenance. It would allow us to not have to clean a whole lot. Where's the yard in that well, you're not really going to have a yard in a condo. Okay. Maybe wanted... maybe a patio is about. Where are we going to put the grill on that one? I don't know how much time, you know, having a house, a big home that we have to take care of, how much time we're going to have for each other. But at the same time, I mean, you need to realize how I'm going to feel and we both need to sacrifice. I, I just would like you to look at two or three of these and just see what you think.
After Kelly's difficult discussion with Jeff about starting a family together, she took shelter among her own family to think things through. How's your new business going? What is your new business? Matchmaking Go business. Oh, well, that sounds exciting. Oh. Who's your oh, first matchup? Luana. Lulu. Oh, yeah. Double, double Lou. <laughs> I was born and raised in Louisville. I love it. This is home. You know, my family is such a big part of my life. But I think that what I'm missing in my life is a child. <laughs> Tell mommy that. Say, so love your hair, hope you win. I feel so torn. Having to choose between Jeff or having a child of my own. <laughs> when I was married, I really wanted a child. And I got pregnant. When I had a miscarriage, that was disappointing for me. It was a very emotional experience for me. I knew that my ex-husband was an unbelievable father because I saw him with his son. Kind of the same thing with Jeff. Jeff is a father, he has a 10 year old son, and it's a good feeling. You see someone who you think has a great relationship with their child, and you think, wow, you know what? Maybe this is the guy that I would have a child with. All right, watch your hand up. Kelly, stick your head in. I want to be with Jeff so badly, and the only way to do that is to move to Chicago. Maybe Jeff will come around, maybe he'll change his mind. And if he doesn't, then I will know that he and I are not meant to be. I didn't know she was, but I didn't know it like. With the pressure of being jobless and the fiasco of her first speech, Hadley was determined to do better the next time around. I called Miss Emily up and I said, get your little butt over here, because she's absolutely spectacular at speaking in front of people. Tell me about your progress. Well, okay, here's the deal. You're like all professional and this like TV personality, so I need your assistance and tell Just me Just show me how you have it in mind. Okay. Show me what you got. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have a guest speaker. Hello, my name is Hadley Hartz, and I'm a volunteer friend and supporter of Katie King. Don't laugh at me. I can't do it if you're laughing. Katie King is a native of Louisville. She was born and raised right here. Katie is a hard worker. She's passionate about what she does, and she is a fair person. Boring. Katie wants to bring respect back to the courthouse. Felt like she was reciting off a resume. She didn't have any personality to it. The only thing Hadley did right was call me for help. Okay. It's boring. There's absolutely no emotion in that speech whatsoever. It's just, it's gone. We just don't use that at all. <laughs> yeah. Emily's very good at what she does. It's like this, like, light switch. Why are you voting for Katie King? You're not going to be like, well, she did this, and she's accomplished this, and she had this role. Right. We're going to speak from the heart. I can do that. I know you can. Well, you've got a lot more faith in, you, in me than I do. But that's okay. Since I lost my job, I mean, I've got to make this whole thing work. I'm not giving up. I'm really glad that I've got friends like Emily to lean on. Of course. Of I just course. hope I don't blow it. Again. Coming up. I think this dining room is incredible. Happily Ever After gets even harder as Shay and Jeff face off over the perfect home. Here's your backyard. <laughs> I just feel like walking into here doesn't feel like home to me. Shay's search for a cozy, low-maintenance condo leads her to Louisville's Millionaire's Row to try to sway Jeff into making their next little purchase. <laughs> this is a big mansion broken up into two condos, but it's got just like a lot of the quality older homes have. I just want to make sure that Jeff understands and that we would have so much more time and energy for each other if we just had a simple condo. I think this dining room is incredible. You're not gonna find a dining room this size and you know how I am about dinner parties. This is the bedroom, okay? Wow, I don't like it that we're on the street and a busy street. So you're worried about the sound? Yeah. I understand that, but they're really big, beautiful windows and you can see who's coming at you. Okay, this is the bathroom. Oh my and God. And you're never gonna get a shower like that. That's like one of the rainfall ones. I love the detail. I don't, I'm not about ceiling fans. I love this fan. I know you like chandeliers, but you can't have a chandelier every room. Oh, I'm pretty sure you can have a chandelier in every room. <laughs> I think Jeff really wants to go straight from renting to the white picket fence, backyard, house, mowing of lawn. We have complete conflicting ideas of where we should live as of now. This was definitely a Shea style condo. This isn't your ordinary starter condo. This was definitely a diva condo, I and mean, that's Shea. Here's your backyard. 
<laughs> this is our, big, our spacious backyard. Yeah. Um, you and your dog can hang out you think right he's here. He's going to do laps around here. Well, he could do laps on the porch. You know, that's a major concern of mine now. And it's been quite a contention with Shay and I with regards to our dog. I mean, well, I'm going to label it my dog, I guess, because she has her cats, which I despise. I mean, I hate cats, especially the ones that she has. They don't really do much. Well, hopefully the cats might not be around too much longer. <laughs> the cats are adorable. Jeff thinks we can give them away, and we can't. I mean, we'd definitely be sharing the yard with the neighbors and the neighbors upstairs. The condo backyard is absolutely ridiculous. I hope she was joking. I hope she was joking. I like this place a lot. It has great detail. I just, I want a, I want a house with a yard. But do you know that that's going to require a lot of maintenance and time. I and do, but that's what I enjoy. When are you going to fit in mowing a lawn? That's what I enjoy doing. I just feel like walking into here doesn't feel like home to me. I don't think about my family starting in a condo. I think my, about my family starting in a house. I do not know where Jeff is coming from. I'm trying to look out for the two of us, and I think this place is perfect. Like many traditional Kentucky folk, Emily and her father enjoy a little father-daughter time at their local gun range. My dad is a responsible registered gun owner who has been shooting for quite some time. Put this over there. I'm really trying to find my courage to tell my dad. I'm moving to Las Vegas permanently. Mm. Can I draw on it? Maybe like an ex-boyfriend's head one. or There's something like that? Them, I tell my dad a lot. We're very close. I just don't want to break his heart. I'm scared that he's really going to be upset. Okay, you pick it up. Aim it. Am I even hitting it? See how you did so far. Emily, you didn't hit the target. <laughs> We've got to do better than this, obviously. You've got to at least hit the target. Now we're going to fire. Why is it fun? Maybe it's not such a good time to tell my dad that his little girl's moving to Las Vegas for good while he's got a gun in his hand. I do want to talk to you, though. Really? Yes. All right. Let's get cheery. Let's sit down. If only I had my dad's blessing, I could be on the first thing smoking out of Kentucky. Do you worry about me in Las Vegas? Of course I do. What's your biggest worry? More than other people doing things to you, I worry that you may do something stupid. All it takes is one time. One time to slip up. I know at times like, it seems like I'm just too obsessed with my hair or... Makeup, clothes. The, the, you know, the outfit. But really, like, like, I listen to everything you say. I really do. I appreciate that anyway. That's a good first step. I really wanted to tell my dad about my decision, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I tried, but I just couldn't find the words to say it. Armed with Emily's encouraging words, Hadley decided to take one more shot at her speech for Katie King. Hey, guys. I was just wondering if I could have your attention for a minute. So I'm giving my speech, and I look into the crowd, and there's Jimmy, this guy I went to high school with. He's a lobbyist in Frankfurt. Um, Katie King, um, just... Okay, so at this point, I'm, like, really, really nervous, and it's really hard for me to concentrate on the speech. So then I remembered what Emily said, and she told me just to get up there and speak from the heart. So I did. I was actually talking with Katie the other day, and she said, if you could come up with one word to describe me, what would it be? And I said, devoted. I like to think that I'm a people person. I feel like one of my strengths is talking to people and educating them, and I really felt like I got to do that with my speech. So just remember to vote for Katie on November 4th for District Court Judge. Thanks. Nailed it. Pat myself on the back, but I think I did a really good job. <laughs> How you been? You know, it's always kind of funny when fate steps in. Is this something you want to do, get involved in the political arena? Or? Um, yeah. Well, actually, I'm really glad I ran into you. Okay. I don't really know where to, I guess, go from here. I've seen a lot of speeches <laughs> over this week, and that was really a good job you did Thank up there. Yeah. Our director would be more than happy to talk with you. We need some enthusiasm and some fresh ideas, so Ugh. just give me a shout this week. All right. There you go. You know, actually, losing my old job was kind of a blessing in disguise because Jimmy is going to hook me up with an interview and hopefully a new job. Well, I'll give you a call sometime this week. Sounds great. All right, see ya. see ya.
Today I'm going to try a karate class. I think karate is the perfect training ground for me to learn to be more confident and more aggressive. So I think that'll be a good opportunity to take Dre's advice and put it into motion. Hey, come on, let him have it. You can't just stand there. Okay, start over. Because <laughs> this is what I'm going to tell the guy that's coming after me. Wait, we need to do this again. Wait. All right, ready? Go. Go. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous at first. It was just everything was new, and I didn't really know what to expect. The guy was trying to punch you. He's trying to hurt you. Break his arm for it. Sounds good. <laughs> the more and more we got into it, she got way into it. And before I know it, she's like kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. Kicking yeah, these yeah. dummies in the stomach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Punching guys yeah, and you yeah, know yeah, taking yeah, them yeah. down, you know, off of their feet. Yeah. Right. You know, she's loving every minute of it. Yeah. One thing I realized when I was punching the dummies was after one bad date after another, it's frustrating. So that was a really good way to kind of let that frustration out. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun to like be the tough chick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up is ask a guy out on a date. I just hope I don't have to deck him first. <laughs> All right. Woo. Coming up. Let me talk to you about something. It's not, don't freak out, please. I just want to get your opinion. And I want to let you know that. Ooh. So I woke up at like 4 a.m. because I've got this huge interview today, and I had to drive all the way from Louisville to Frankfurt, which is the capital of Kentucky, and I have a job interview um, with a lobbying firm. I just got let go from my personal assistant job and nobody likes not having a job. So I am nervous as I'll get out. <laughs> this job is massively important. This is me getting my foot in the door with something I'm, I'm very passionate about and really would like to get involved in. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Hadley Hart. Sean Cutter. Nice, nice to see you. I graduated uh, high school with Hadley. As you know, she's trying to break into Frankfurt. Well, I'll let you two uh, go about it. Good luck with everything. Go easy on her. We'll see. I've had the nanny jobs and, and the PA jobs, but this job is not a job, it is a career. It's not only going to pay the bills, but it's, it's definitely going to make me whole and make me feel like the woman that I feel like I can be. Recently I did some campaigning for Katie King. It was nice to actually talk to uh, a younger woman who was trying to up, up her job and, and really kind of step up to the plate. I actually went to school in education to be an elementary school teacher. Um, then I went back and got my master's and then started working on my PhD. Obviously, you've got a, a good background, both at school and with having some experience. Oh, I can definitely taste the job. The carrot is dangling in front of my face. It's just out of reach at the moment. Hi, Chinese food? Yes. Mom's coming over tonight for dinner, and we're going to have a little talk. You've been eating in the car. I did not. <laughs> Well, maybe a little bite. <laughs> uh-huh, I bet you did. I have some really big news to share with Mom tonight. My mom does not know that Jeff has asked me to move to Chicago. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about something. Not, <laughs> don't freak out, please. <laughs> Jeff has asked me to move to Chicago. And I think I'm going to. Oh. Oh, I am shocked. Yeah, I'm gonna cry. Oh, so is this um, gonna be anywhere in the near future? I mean, like next week. What? What's your plans? I mean, what? To, I mean, you know, I very well could continue the matchmaking business. Who knows? So it's it's all an open book right now. You know, my family is such a big part of my life. It is important to me. I would love to have a child at some point, and. You know what? Maybe Jeff will come around. I'll come home for Derby. Of course you'll come home for Derby. Would you ever miss Derby? If Jeff doesn't decide that he wants a child, I can always come back home. Louisville is not going anywhere. All right, Mama. I love you. I love you, too. Hey. Hi, sweetie. Hey, Em. Um, how are you? Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Hi, honey. What are you guys cooking? Something nice and easy and quick. I'm moving to Las Vegas permanently, and now I've got to break the news to my family, but I'm nervous. 
I don't want there to be tension between my parents and me. And I don't want to go weeks without being able to talk to them or hear from them. What's like up? Um, what? Um. Hey, Emily. What? Um. Tell me, is it time to go? Did we miss our curtain call? I've been standing here so long It's not easy to let go 